But let's talk about the, the, the dangers, so to speak, of agents, where agents can go wrong. All right? Number one is um, there is no licensing process that says no license needed. There is no license needed. Um, there are some larger sort of agency conglomerations that a lot of the agencies belong to, like professional organizations, but there's no, there's, there's no um, regulation on agents. You can print a business card and say literary agent. Okay? Be very, very aware of this. There are a lot of agent scams. Um, in fact, I would say before the, you know, in the, in the late 90s, early 2000s, the number one scam that authors would fall into would be agent scams. Um, agent scams generally work like this. Um, there, there are different forms, but you will send them your book, and they will say, well, they'll, first they'll have a reading fee. Watch out for reading fees. Um, I know a lot of agents would love to charge reading fees. Uh, the problem is that historically, charging a reading fee has meant that you make your money off of reading fees and not off of selling books. And so the, um, the entire sort of community of agents has decided we need to live on our 15% and not on reading fees. Even though in, in, like in a perfect world, a reading fee does make kind of so, some sense. Uh, but in general, what has been determined is if it charges, if they charge a reading fee, you should go and walk the other direction. Um, uh, no matter what the situation, no matter what the contest or things like that, in, in book publishing, generally, you want to walk away from anything that charges you up front to enter. Um, there could be exceptions for that. I've heard of legitimate contests occasionally um, requiring like a $10 or $15 reading fee to make sure that they don't get flooded. Now, pretty good with the electronic era with, you know, every buddy's backlist sending in every book they've ever written to the contest. But um, a lot of other ones like the Amazon Breakout Novel Contest are avoiding that by, have, by crowdsourcing the first, um, you know, the first, uh, the first level, you know, people, the crowds read it, decide what they like, they vote it up, and then those become the ones that make the first cut, and then those are hand, handleable and read. So watch out for reading fees. So that's scam number one, is the reading fee. And when I say scam, keep in mind that scam could include legitimate um, thieves, or it could include good intentioned novices who don't know what they're doing um, and think they want to get into this agents, agenting thing. And so they end up scamming you. And it's not a scam. I shouldn't besmirch them like that, but it ends up being the same to you. Okay? So the reading fee scam is one to keep an eye on. Um, so the next thing that they would do is, even if they weren't charging or feeding, or even if they were, they would then send you on to the, um, the book mills which would be like, you know, or an editorial mill, which it would be, they would say, oh, your book is almost there, but I don't do editing. I know of, some, of a really great editor, and if you pay them to fix your, to, to work with you on the book, then I think this would be legitimate for me to, um, to take. There's nothing wrong with hiring an independent editor, as we've talked about before, but the problem here is they are then making the money on a kickback from that editor, and they are not making money on selling your books. To see how that scam could work very well, you're like, oh, I'm almost there. Yeah, I need an editor. Boom, but they're sending everybody to this editor. <coughs> the other thing to keep in mind about independent editors is um, getting advice from an editor is good. Um, it's useful, but you don't want to go overboard in spending a lot of money doing this because you're going to eventually have to get good enough on your own if you want to go in New York publishing, that, um, that you shouldn't need the independent editor. The independent editor is more well-suited to self-publishing where you're not looking for an editor. An editor in New York will be reading your book with the mindset of, we're going to put this through revisions, so it doesn't need to be perfect yet. Um, and I know 
people who will hire independent editors. Again, I'm not as, um, as down on this as some people are. To get their book into shape to help them sell it. Which, you know, there is an argument for that, but at the same time, you've got to keep, your, um, keep in your mind that no matter you know, how much you polish, if you aren't practicing a lot and getting good, it's not going to matter that much. You're probably better off writing more and getting where, to the point where you're doing it on your own. All right? But, um, so, the scams, book mills um, would be the place where they're like, oh, great, this is a great book, let's publish it with, and then they will send you to um, a scam publisher, which is a self-publishing -pub um, press masquerading as a traditional publishing press. I have no problem with self-publishing presses. I have problems with the ones who pretend to be real publishers in order to get your money from you. Um, there is a lot of talk online of one that has a reputation for this called Publish America, um, who has been sued not numerous times. You can go read about it on your own. Um, the argument against Publish America type places is that they're trying to convince their authors that it's a traditional press, uh, that their books are going to be in bookstores, that this is, you know, this is just like getting published by Random House or something like that. And then they publish 30,000 books in a year. And anybody basically who sends them a book. Um, science fiction fantasy authors try to sting operation where they sent them a book uh, to try and show. They claim to have these high um, standards. They sent them this book, um, which each chapter was written by a different author. And the authors hadn't talked to each other about what was happening in the book. They just wrote a chapter however they wanted, like using the same character names. They um, computer generated one chapter with random words. Uh, let the computer author it. Um, they put like several chapters, the same chapter in, and things like that, and send it to Publish America. And like they sent back this letter, said this is a great book. We're going to give it the chance it deserves, even the others are ignoring it. You know, and here's here's our pitch or whatever. And then you they they try and um, they publish your book for free, but then charge you like twenty bucks a copy that you, to get it from them. And then they try to buy. You know, they were doing this thing where they would. Um, they would, uh, they would send your book to Oprah to be on Oprah's book club. If you, but you had to buy a case of them, and they'd send the whole case so that everybody you know, at Oprah's book club could, you know. And, and so what was happening is they were, you were just being paid, and then they were just putting the postage on it and shipping it to, and so there were just stacks of boxes of books being shipped there by these aspiring writers who were like, yes, my publisher's taking care of me, and then they were just getting pulped. I mean, you know. What do you, yeah, if you're Oprah's book club people and a box of books comes in from someone, yeah, anyway. So things like that. Um, and a lot of these uh, things do start with the agents. Um, some of them don't. There are plenty of, um, of, of places that don't. Go read through the archives of, um, of the Writer Beware blog. I highly recommend that. It's run by CIPWA and the Mystery Writers Association of America. Um, and they highlight things like this. And you really want to jump back a few years and start and to get a really good my view of what how this sort of stuff happens. Also, Predators and Editors. Predators and Editors is a good resource. Lists all, um, all the editors and agents and um, if they've been given recommendations by their authors and things like that. A lot of places that, one place that a lot of people talk about these things um, are the message boards of the website Absolute Right. Um, I found it to be a very good uh, uh, resource you can like go on there and ask about a publisher. You probably want to search first because they've probably already talked about it and say, what do people think of this agent? What do people think of this, uh, of this publisher? And usually there will be a thread discussing it where people have, have talked it over. So that was uh, absolute, absolute right. right with a W. Uh, their forums are, are very good. So those are just a few resources. CIFWA also does, by the way, I believe still have Science Fiction Writers Association of America, does have some sample contracts on their websites of what a good author-friendly contract looks like, um, since you don't have mine handy to flip through, CIFWA has posted some of them. Okay? So those are some good resources. So, dangers. Um, then there's always just the do-nothing agent. Um, a do-nothing agent is one of these like newbies who starts out and they're like, you know, I have some publishing experience, maybe they interned at a publisher, and I want to be an agent and they don't have all of this, but they've got a little bit of each of it, but they really just kind of want to be an agent. And so people start sending them books and they don't really do anything with them and they don't know how to do anything with them. Um, or, you know, the agent, if an agent is not in New York, even still, if an agent is not in New York, be skeptical. There are good agents outside of New York, but
but they are very few and far between because one of the things that agents do is be an expert in all these things. And part of the reason to have an agent is so that they can be your proxy in New York, the center of publishing, um, and do all of this stuff that you can't do because you're living outside of New York. Okay? So be very skeptical of that, um, the do nothing agent. Um, to avoid all of these things, oh, yeah. So are you talking about New York City or New York? City? I'm talking about New York City, but the state is okay. There are some that will live in like White Plains or one of the commuter um, communities into New York. Uh, most of them will have offices on um, you know, Queens or Manhattan or something like that, but you know. If they're close, you're probably gonna be okay. And that said, there are a few good ones. You'll, you'll find good ones in LA. You'll find good ones in Boston occasionally um, and things like this, but they're doing frequent trips to New York. Really, the only thing, you can get, a, you can get past all of these things with one simple rule. I want to let you know what you're getting past, but there's a very simple rule to get past all of this, and that is, can you find their books on shelves? We may lose this litmus test if, um, if we lose uh, bookstores, but for right now, any agent that you want to submit to you should be able to go find a book they have re recently negotiated on a shelf at a Barnes & Noble. <laughs> if you can't, don't go with that agent. Um, you say, well, how does an agent, you know, all those poor new agents. Agents work very much by a mentoring system. The, be the best way that you become an agent is that you work with an established agent for a while. And as long as the agency is doing this, you're probably okay. You really want to find books by that agent specifically, but if you find books by that agency, you're probably going to be okay. Um, the other way people become agents is by being an editor for a long time, and usually when they start agenting, they will start by having a few established clients that they've worked with in the past who picked them up as an agent whose like, agents passed away or something like that. You will be able to find their books on the shelf too. Um, where do you find in the book that says like the agency of the agent that worked with? Usually it's the acknowledgments, um, but I mean, uh, you're, you're usually backtracking, meaning you are interested in this agent on their website, they will list their clients, they all do. You go and you look and find those, book, those author's books on the bookstore shelf, store shelf. If you want to know who an author's agent is, then you can start with the acknowledgments page. If it's not on there, you can um, Google it, and usually they'll talk about their agent on their website. And if that doesn't um, happen, you can um, send them an email. Are there any agents who are more successful at being agents than they were at authors? Uh, yeah, yeah. I would say there are some that were authors that became agents or editors that became agents that are more successful one way or the other. It does happen. Um, and you, know, you do want to be searching for an agent who's publishing in your genre or representing people who are publishing in your genre. For instance, if you're representing teen, you really want someone who's had some success in teen. Um, if you're doing sci-fi fantasy, you want someone who's been, had success in sci-fi fantasy. And you can backtrack that with, with this thing. This rule is very good. In the future, we may have to move to a, you know, go and look in how many copies is, you know, what's their Amazon sales rank or whatever. But currently, this is a very good litmus, and I expect it to be for a while yet. Um, and hopefully forever. I hope that we always have bookstores, but who knows. Okay?